Hey guys, welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Don here, uh, trying to help you to get to the 1 million mark uh, in your practice. That's kind of what the goal of this this podcast and this, this website is. Uh, I want to talk today about my MVPs, which I call the most valuable patients. Um, there was a, the first patient is, um, she was a 46-year-old female. Uh, she had been seen for three sessions of Shockwave, uh, and I already saw her, and I was just seeing her back six weeks after she had done physical therapy. So usually I do three sessions of EPAT, um, and then I do six weeks of uh, physical therapy. And she wasn't getting better, and I decided to get an MRI. And in, in, uh, I did an ultrasound before, but I wasn't able to visualize it, but there was a little partial tear in her Achilles, and uh, she had to have a bump in the back of her heel uh, consistent with the Haglans, but we're wanting to avoid... Uh, the speed bridge procedure. I did one on the other side, but this side, it's her right side. So I did one on the left in the, uh, quite a few years ago. And this time, it, this, uh, this one on the right flared up, but we're trying to avoid the surgery. So what we're doing for her is um, we're going to do combo shockwave, which is radial and focused. Uh, and the way I set it up with my staff is they do a four, five, and six, because I've done one, two, and three, so I can know what number I'm on. Four, five, and six for that right uh, Achilles region. And then at the at the fifth one, usually the second one, that's where I'm going to be doing the ultrasound guided amnio injection into that area, and then she's going to be wearing her walking boot. Uh, another thing that I did is I ordered her uh, a carbon fiber brace to offload the Achilles uh, during this recovery period. I could not do it myself because of her insurance in Massachusetts. Now with Blue Cross, I have to send them out to hangar, but I do have a good working relationship with them, so they they kind of know the brace that I that I like. I would certainly prefer to do it myself, but I can't. So she she also got a prescription for uh, that that uh, carbon fiber brace. So that was um, uh, the first one. Uh, the other other patient was a was a patient that came in with a really bad ankle sprain, a lateral ankle sprain. She didn't have a fracture, but she was quite swollen, and she wanted to uh, get back to work. And um, because of this, when I, I find when there's a lot of swelling. Uh, shockwave can be helpful as well. So I set her up for three sessions of shockwave for her ankle sprain. And uh, just to get kind of down the swelling, I also put her in an unaboot uh, to, to get down the swelling. So we had the unaboot, we had the x-rays, we had the um, you know office visit, and we're going to set her up for the three, three shockwave appointments. Um, that was that patient. And then a couple of other good ones were a couple of patients that they had like uh, hairline fractures or stress fractures. On, on the x-ray, you really can't see the fracture too well, but there's pain with vibration with the tuning fork. And so for those ones, I call them uh, fracture codes. And so I use the procedure fracture codes. If you're not familiar with that, um, let me know. Um, and I can I can do a whole other uh, episode on that. But I, I do, the fracture code help because it, it pays a little bit more. And then there's a um, longer global period for office visits, but it pays more upfront. And especially with some of these like stress fractures, you're not going to have to see them all that often. So they're getting a walking boot and then they're coming back in um, only after that. And the other big win, it's not, not, I don't know if it's the most valuable patient, but it's kind of a satisfying patient is um, I had a patient that had some dermatitis on their foot. And they had been using like betamethasone or clobetazole, one of those steroid creams, and they really weren't getting better. And I, I wasn't too sure they were really using it. So I asked them to do it under occlusion. And I haven't found a great way to do things under occlusion. I, I tend to tell them to put the put the the cream on and then take plastic wrap and wrap their foot and then put a sock on. And then it works a lot better. But this patient, she actually did it. And she said, she's, she's like, wow, this is this really worked. And there was cream at the end of the day and, and this and that. And so I think that's a that's kind of a satisfying patient is helping our patients to to learn how to do things correctly so they will get get better. And I think that a lot of times that's that's what we're doing. Um, I am using a new sheet here. Um, this is what I I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. I'll put it under on, underneath this, um, but it's called like a like a treatment um, check not a checklist, but it's something where I put here. If you can imagine, there's a it's an Excel sheet with like 25 slots for 25 patients, and it has um, established patients, orthotics, procedures, x-rays, DME, EPAT, and whatever offered it. So I'm using this kind of as a checklist throughout the day. I've tried a couple of things in the past. Um, in the past, I used to print out my all my, my patient um you know, the, the patient list for the day with all the information. I didn't really, I didn't use it that all that much. It was good to know the patients that were in there, but for the EMR, it's all right on the screen. Uh, but I like this paper better. So as I'm doing my notes, I just check off. It really helps me to keep my mind on the prize specifically um, for orthotics and other things that'll help me kind of 
bring me to the to the million dollar mark at the end of the year. Um, I've also thought about uh, potentially almost like gamifying it, so giving each each um, each type of of activity uh, a point a point system. Like, let me give you an example. This is something I was thinking about last night. Um, so, for example, let's say new patients bring in one one hundred fifty to two hundred. So that would be let's say it's two. So that'd be two points because it's two hundred orthotics, five points. Most procedures maybe one to two points. Uh, let's say one point. So one hundred dollars for most of the procedures or around there. X rays probably one point. Um, DME like two to three points. EPAT would be um, um, like two points because it's two hundred dollars. And then like amnio would be fifteen points because it's it's um it's $1,500. So every hundred you would have one point. And so it would be a way to kind of gamify it and you could um, show what the higher profit um, uh, activities are and maybe even just weighting it that way, like putting them in order that way so you can keep the focus on those things um, that are that are more profitable for your practice. Because I just find that many times I get distracted uh, throughout the day with, with my 500 other things that I do. And um, I find that having a, this written down, it really keeps my focus to make sure I'm, I'm working on the procedures, getting the office visits, doing the x-rays, um, and, and things like that. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you, your thoughts. Uh, send me an email, uh, don at podiatrypracticemastery.com. If you're not part of the Practice Mastery Academy, uh, please uh, join. Go to uh, practice mastery, uh, podiatrypracticemastery.com. Okay, thanks.